Hello everyone, welcome to Current Affairs with Jyotsna Sharma, my exclusive show that focuses on current affairs and events that are relevant to you. Here in the United States of America, we have our studio in New Jersey and I am covering this special story because it has a meaning attached to the entire population of Indians living in America. Seattle is explicitly banning discrimination on the basis of caste, making it the first city in the US to take such a step. And the city's, uh, Seattle City Council approved an ordinance on Tuesday that amends the city's municipal code to include caste as a protected class alongside categories such as race, religion and gender identity. I had covered an interview a uh, couple of weeks back with the representatives of Coalition of Hindus of North America and uh, this is in continuation to it now. The reason is there was an opposition from multiple Hindu groups as to why or in fact multiple Indian groups as to why is it being introduced here. Why is caste being added as an element of discrimination in America when Indians have you know tried to do away with the caste in India itself. What is brewing up and what would be the impact of this ordinance on Indians in America? To talk about that and discuss at length, I have two esteemed guests tonight with me. I have Nikunj Trivedi, the founder of Coalition of Hindus of North America, also known as Kohana. And I also have Ajay Shah, the president of Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America. Very, very warm welcome to both my uh, guests here uh, who have virtually joined us tonight. Uh, warm welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, first and foremost, I would give it to you both to introduce yourself in detail and about your organization a little uh, just in a minute itself so that people know what you exactly do. Uh, Nikunj, I'll give it to you first. Of course, you were there in the last interview. And then we'll go to Ajay Shah. Sure. Uh, Kona was started in June of, uh, sorry, April of 2020. It's a grassroots advocacy and civil rights organization working on improving the understanding of Hinduism in North America and matters that impact our community. Uh, since the formation, we have been growing in across the US and Canada. Uh, we have chapters across East Coast and West Coast, North, South in Canada as well. And each of those chapters work on local matters as well as national matters, whether it's the, you know, just the, the legislation around swastika, banning swastika, or around certain local legislations like the CAST, the Seattle CAST ordinance, educating people about uh, what CAST really is. Uh, also talking about Hindu phobia, how anti-Hindu sentiment manifests and how people can cha challenge that. Through our Hindu Parents Network, we also focus on equipping parents uh, and kids to understand what the issues are in the school system and how they can tackle that, whether it's uh, bias, prejudice, bullying, uh, as well as misinformation about Hinduism. So people can find out more about Kona uh, at Kona.org, C-O-H-N-A.org, or follow us on our social media handles at, at Kona Official. And you can also volunteer with us at Kona.org. Thank you, Nikunj. And Ajay, uh, kindly give us a little bit more introduction sure. about yourself. Thank you. First of all, thank you for giving the opportunity. So I'm Ajay Shah, I'm the president of uh, World Hindu Council of America, also known as BHPA. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, convener of Hindu PAC, which is Hindu Policy Research and Advocacy Collective, which is our, which is our advocacy arm. Uh, BHPA is probably the uh, oldest and one of the largest Hindu organizations in America. We have been around for more than 50 years now. And in every aspect of American life, starting with Balbihar, which we are running in uh, several cities, at least, uh, uh, you know, for 50, 45 out of 50 years, we have been running Balbihars. We are running uh, youth summer youth camps in multiple states and multiple cities. Uh, we also were, you know, we were uh, instrumental in founding of Hindu Students Council in the University of America, Ekal Vidyalaya, some of the bigger programs. You might have heard of Hindu Mandir Executives Conference, which is uh, a co you know a platform where all the Mandir executives come together. We have had so far almost 600 Mandirs participate in our activities through HMEC, uh, and the conferences are held every year. In addition, we have Hindu Priest Conference, and we also have, uh, we focus on several issues, uh, starting with Samskar to Seva. We have uh, a large program called Support a Child. We support over 5,000 kids in India. We have Seva in America. And uh, we also, are, uh, you know, started uh, a Hindu phobia, uh, countering the Hindu phobia initiative called Hindu Dvesha, 
And you can visit that website called hindudvesha.org. Uh, we were the first anywhere in the world to take up the issues related to anti-defamation of Hindu, uh, anti-defamation related to Hindu cultural icons, Hindu deities, and uh, other cultural uh, norms or practices under our initiative called American Hindus Against Defamation. Uh, today, I, you know, and of course, you can learn a lot more about right. VHPA by going to vhp-america.org or follow us at uh, VHPA News on Twitter. Interesting. Uh, uh, you know, there, there is a whole array of good things that you do. Uh, indeed, you. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure to have you here, Ajay, and uh, Nikunj both, you know. Nikunj, I'll start with you again. Reason being, you know, when we met in the last uh, disc, uh, you know, interview, uh, of course, you had pleaded, I mean, you had requested the people to participate in a, peti to, you know, sign a petition so that uh, that ordinance does not get passed. But then eventually it didn't work and uh, it has passed now. Uh, Councilwoman Shama Sawant in Seattle City Council got this ordinance passed. What are the, you know, next steps uh, you see from here as an impact of this, uh, you know, caste ordinance? How is it going to uh, affect the Indians in general? This is a question for both of you. I'm starting with Nikunj. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, I, and I'm glad you mentioned that we were, we have been working on this and last time we were on the, on the channel here. Uh, look, on, on the ground, we had volunteers going in and uh, in city council testimony, testifying and for the past over one month, we've been working really hard on this. Uh, close to 20,000 emails in total have been sent. 113 organizations, Hindu, Jain, non-Hindu organizations signed up for uh, as a letter to protest uh, and sent, it was sent to the city council. Uh, what I would say is that what was interesting in this whole thing was we, we saw that the city council was rushing it. Okay, it was a rush a decision. Uh, there was no due diligence done. You could literally say that as the music was playing, essentially, you could realize that a lot of these council members had already decided. There was one councilwoman who actually was a lone dissenter, Congre uh, Councilwoman Sarah Nelson, who, have, who sent out a very strong message of why she was against it. Uh, how the, there's a rec, it's a reckless resolution or reckless ordinance, I'm sorry, that lacks the data and due diligence. It is also has the risk of advancing anti-Hindu discrimination uh, against people of Hindu origin, but also in the people of the, the wider people of South Asian origin. So she has written a very strong letter. You can find that uh, on, on her website as well as on our, on our Twitter feed. Uh, so there are, this, this thing has a wide reaching impact, okay? Um, there are legal complications here from a violation of civil rights of Hindus and uh, South Asians in general. Uh, two very simple things I would like to highlight. For example, if you are going to be, uh, if you are a cultural organization, okay, you could be accused of caste discrimination because if you're pro promoting vegetarian food or if you're only saying, I am the Patel Samaj or I'm the Agarwal Samaj or I'm this Samaj or that Samaj, if someone says, I want to be part of it, there's potential uh, backlash against you for being casteist. If you are promoting the, uh, a vegetarian lifestyle, as they had uh, talked about in the, in the in the hearing, that could also be considered casteist. But more importantly, that is going to be a about... real big problem. Yeah, <laughs> but more importantly, uh, and I'll, I'll let Ajay Bhai talk about it more. But more importantly, I, I'm particularly concerned about employers. So, for example, if you're a manager, you could be at risk of being sued uh, because let's say someone doesn't want to work for you and you and you you fire that person, you could be sued for caste discrimination, as that has happened in Cisco. What, what's also important is, let's say you, for example, you say that my, my, my uh, employer, uh, his, my manager's last name is Privedi, and this guy is upper caste, so I don't want to work for him. So employers would have to make special arrangements, potentially, to put me, put my employee, whoever that other person is, in a different group, uh, because he can say that I could be potentially casteist, just based on my birth last name, this regardless of whether I follow it or not. This is scary. So that's a pretty scary stuff, if I, if I may say. Uh, also, if you are a, let's say, business owner, you could be denied license if you are accused of, uh, you know, caste discrimination. So there's a, a wide-ranging uh, impact of this that people are not just not realizing this thing. So that's all I have to say for now. Mm, quite an insight, and it is eye-opening. Well, uh, thank you for those inputs, uh, Nikunj. Ajay, I would want you to add up, and of course, what do you feel about the impact? Yeah, so there is really a huge impact, right? Just look at what has happened in the last couple of years when Salim Gonder, who mm -hmm. was, uh, was appointed, Dr. Salim Gonder was appointed as the transition COVID lead by the Biden administration 
the first attack came to her from the people who are promoting this caste uh, resolution or caste ordinances across the country, including Equality Lab. And one of the first things they said was that here is an upper caste woman who is being appointed as the COVID task force. And they went to Celine Gondor and said, change your last name, drop your last name. Uh, when Pankaj Agarwal was appointed as the head of Twitter, as a CEO of Twitter, the first attacks came on uh, on Twitter itself, saying there is another upper caste Brahmin being appointed as a CEO of uh, a yes. large social media company. And they, of course, they quoted the CEO of Google and CEO of Microsoft, and they said, here's another one. And just uh, a couple of weeks ago, when Vivek Ramaswamy decided to run for president, the first attack on him was not about his ideology, not about him having strong view, political views of one kind or the other, but the first attack on him was, here is another upper caste Hindu running for an office. So now, every Hindu, whether they know their caste, they don't know their caste, first of all, there's no such thing as caste in Hindu scriptures. We have Varna and we have Jati, and Varna is flexible. Jatis are people are born in the based on profession, but Varna is people can change from one Varna to other. And even Rukweda has the uh, script uh, uh, slokas that say that people in the same family had different varnas. Absolutely. But here, now you're typecast just for running for an office, you're being accused of uh, being of one caste, which is a Portuguese imp imposition. Add to that, that the schools are taking a cue from there. Just We just got a report last week that in Bay Area, in one of the elementary schools, kids were asked to role play where somebody had to play a role of a Shudra and somebody as a Vaishya, somebody as a Brahmin. And they were said that, okay, is, now, you know, this uh, is disgusting. Uh, see, go ahead and mistreat a kid and uh, you will Ajay, see. Ajay, Ajay, I, Ajay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, interrupt you a little bit. This happened in California, you say? This happened in California. That's what uh, the reports we have said. You have the name of the uh, school? I, I will pass it along. It's in the, I, I have it as a WhatsApp from someone. I'll I mean, pass it along. Just doing a fact check, but this is really yeah, absolutely. disgusting. I would say that if this has happened. What yeah. are they trying I mean, to tell the primary there are slavery, elementary you know, school they, kids? What do they know about it? What do they know about it, right? And, uh, and look. All right, carry this on. This is atrocious, right? Because when people, uh, when similar things happen, when people are asked to role play about uh, slavery, those teachers get fired. Because they don't want people to play that kind of role-playing game. I mean, people, you know, so so this is the actual direct impact. Why do, and, and look at where they're going. They, this, this started with, uh, of course, with Brandeis, and then it went to, directly to wherever the Indians have most success. So whatever the Hindus are most successful. So it goes to uh, a place like Cisco, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, prominent of technology companies. Then uh, Silicon Valley, where Hindus have contributed in immensely right. to the American, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, American uh, high tech industry. They go to Cal State University, which is uh, arguably one of the largest university systems with 450,000 students. And now they're going to all the Ivy League schools, where uh, there are disproportionate number because of hard work and, and uh, you know, single-minded focus on higher education. Um, you know, where Hindu, Hindus are in, in prominence. So these are the places that get targeted so that Hindus do not occupy places of prominence, do not have good jobs, and uh, their kids essentially come and say, you know what, I want, I don't want to have any problems, I'll just say I'm not a Hindu. I so don't this, understand the target this. of this is for Hindu kid to say, I'm not a Hindu, I don't want this hassle, I'll change my first name, I'll change my last name, and I'll change everything other than my skin color. But that I cannot change. This is a sorry state. I must say it's eye-opening to the entire Indian community as in general. And when we speak about Hindus in general, it's not just about Hindus. There are different, uh, you know, I mean, religions, uh, of course, where caste has been mentioned. Yes. We, we speak about Muslims. There is a dis distinction that is being mentioned amongst Muslims as well. So the brown skin are at trouble right now. I mean, I mean to say the people of Indian origin majorly are at trouble somewhere. Because when we speak about this caste, the kind of reservation that was given in India, there are Christians who have availed a reservation on the basis of caste. People converted to Christianity, but the caste lingered on with them. And they, they are still part of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe if they were to discuss at length from that angle. But the problem is, when you come back to US, to, when you are in America, 
first and foremost our kids don't even know what kind of hindus or muslims or christians are we or sikhs are we because they are amalgamated into the system of united states of america majorly they are growing up in this country they have learned the law of this land somewhere and when we speak about caste we are trying to bring back our entire generation to thousands of years back my question to both of you is this is one impact that you're speaking about right now they are talking about taking this ordinance uh, to get it passed such like you know to get such ordinances passed in other uh, cities and states as well what is your information what is the information are you carrying right now that what are they targeting right now um well i mean we obviously don't have all the information nor can we if we did we, we wouldn't want to share that on in in you know in the but in still the a fair but, idea little idea uh, the idea is idea generally is look you can look at the caa resolutions that were uh, that were passed right the different caa resolutions in cities which started from seattle for example it spread into silicon valley it spread to uh, parts of chicago it spread to minneapolis so obviously we'll see some of those same trends repeated and by the way i want to make this very clear this is not a resolution okay it's a law so, so there's a different it's... so when you have a resolution it's just something that a declaration made it's not really impactful but when there's law it's your, you can get fined for it, you can get jailed for it, you can lose your job, you can lose your license to operate. Many things can happen because it's an actual law. So we suspect that they're also going to go after some of these cities that have passed the anti-CAA resolutions targeting India. Uh, it's just a natural thing. I'm sure there might be other places that they may also target, but certainly I think the different groups who are working on this are vigilant and to make sure that we can push back wherever we can. Uh, uh, Ajay, what is your take on this? Yeah, I, I, I echo what uh, Mikun just said, which is that, uh, you know, we just follow, they follow the same pattern because there are cities where uh, some of our opponents have made inroads. And it's important to point out that there's an ecosystem of Hindu hate. Uh, it is not just one organization, Equality Lab, that's leading this. But if you look at the uh, ecosystem and the connections that they have, and this Info Lab has put out really extensive mapping of all the groups that are connected. If you look at that, uh, there are several uh, Islamist organizations that are involved in this and some of the other organizations. So that ecosystem is active in many large cities. And I wouldn't be surprised if it takes exactly the same uh, trajectory as the anti-CA resolution uh, you know, and I, you know, so, uh, but as I said, Nikul said, even if we have information, it's not something that, you know, we would share here because we would be working at the grassroots level to counter this. All right. So my next question is on the similar lines, you know, now that one, of course, one city has passed this ordinance as we speak about it. What are the Hindu organizations per se, as we speak about your organization, BHPA, and of course the Kohana, what is your take now? How are you trying to push back against it? Or maybe going in opposition to this ordinance or taking some action somewhere? Well, so I'm in Seattle today. Uh, I plan to meet people who actually took part in some of the you know grassroots work and learn from their experience as to what worked or didn't work. We know that the ordinance passed, but what were their experience like and what would they advise the rest of the Hindu communities to do uh, across the nation? So I'm, I just have a meeting with them in about an hour or two. So we'll be talking about that. But really, the, the, a, lot of, a lot of times these kinds of things happen because Hindus have not been active at the grassroots level. We right. don't participate in uh, the municipal uh, elections, or we don't have, we don't participate in the city councils as we should, or the state councils. The Hindus who are active at the national level, uh, a lot of them, but when it really comes to doing grassroots work, they are not. So we have one of the initiatives that we have, for example, is called Hindu Vote. And what we want to do is educate the Hindu voters uh, up uh, in, across the board in all the elections, from municipal elections to uh, count, district county level elections to state and federal elections and educate them and help them identify the candidates who are going to be uh, pro-Hindu or at least neutral so that they uh, Hindus have a voice. The, in Seattle City Council, there's really, there's a person with a Hindu name who's pushing this agenda, but there's really no Hindu representation. But if, if I walk down on the street of Seattle like I did today and I did yesterday and all this week, 
uh, there, I, I see a significant number of Indians who are in the city of Seattle because uh, right across from me is Apple and uh, two blocks from here right. is Amazon and all of them are here and there's so many Hindus working here but their level of participation is just not there. So our goal is to, uh, it, is to really educate and really uh, and inspire the Hindus uh, to work at the grassroots level to increase the awareness among non-Hindus and among Hindus to counter such effort and to really let them know that there are some real consequences on them and their children if these kinds of resolutions pass. Thank you, Ajay. Um, Nikunj, I know you have you are running short of time and you have to go yeah, somewhere. No uh, yeah, no, I, I echo his sentiments as well because we spent literally three days. Our general secretary flew to Seattle and we organized a team locally to push back. And there was about 23 of us uh, who actually went to the to the Seattle City Council. And so we spent three days understanding how this whole thing worked. Some people can tell you it was an eye-opening experience. It was a jarring experience, actually, to see all these people with open hatred towards Hindus and towards people of Indian origin. And there were people there, actually. So one of our volunteers walked up to some you know, African-American people, some others who are not like necessarily part of the camp, and they asked them, do you know what caste system is? Do you know what caste is? Do you know why are you here today? And surprisingly, they had no idea. Right? They were just there because they were called to wow. come in and do something. Okay? And were they yeah. voting there? They were. They yeah, were they, no, not voting. They were testifying. Yes, they're they were testifying. testifying. They had signed as, as really? to support this ordinance, but they had no idea why they were there and what caste system is. How is the? What are the nuances of this whole thing? Somebody even asked, "Do you know how many castes are in India?" <laughs> and they, you know, one person just kind of looked, uh, looked, uh, you know, just blank. And another person said four. Nikunj, keep aside asking them. Ask Indians how many castes are there. Yeah, how many saying, Gotras no, no, are there no, in a caste? Here, they yeah. cannot reply back to it. Oh, <laughs> but I'm just saying the level of ignorance. But this, see, it just shows as, as Jeff I already mentioned, there's an ecosystem of anti-Hindu hate that is out there. They don't really care about rational this explanations or understanding the topic. They just want to attack the community based on certain tropes. One of them is caste. And that right. has been effectively used for the past three years almost since the Cisco case to continuously attack the community and make them, uh, you know, essentially internalize some kind of guilt where it doesn't exist based on faulty data by anti-Hindu groups. I mean, uh, thank you for the inputs, Ajay and Nikunj. Of course, we have, we have shortage of time. I have to close it. But the passions, you know, the, the emotions run high here. Problem is, our identity has been put at stake in the United States of America. A land of the free, land of the brave, land of the immigrants. What are we trying to identify with the word cast here? Closing statement from you in 20 seconds each, please, and we'll close it. So, Jyotaji, I would say that uh, this is not a fight we are going to give up because it is about Hindu identity. It is about the future generations of Hindus in America. And it is, uh, it is something that uh, we will fight in every city, in every state, in every university, in every workplace, and entire country. We will not, this is not something that we are going to give up on, and we want all the Hindus to not just be aware of it, but actually to join the fight here. Because Thank this you, is Ajay. not going to be easy, and this is not going to be trivial. Our uh, opponents are formidable. Uh, Uma, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the people who Uma... Uh, we are running short of example, time, Ajay. We'll have to take it next time. Yeah, just, Thank just you. the last yeah, statement. Sure. Uma Dhar, for example, is a daughter of a Pakistani general, and she is spearheading, it, the, the, heading this. She was part of the Equality Lab. So it is not just a regional or US-based ecosystem. There's an international dimension to this, and we better be aware of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Nikunj, you're closing, and we'll close now. Yeah, and uh, what Ajay Bhai said, I echo the sentiment, this fight is not going anywhere. It's an international ecosystem. We have to be organized. We have to wield political and economic power to fight this back. And every single person, whether you agree with this or not agree with it, is going to impact you. Whether you think you are you know, away from past or not, the moment you have brown skin, this thing is coming for you. So get ready, get organized, get involved. That's what I would say. Thank you so much to our viewers. This was something eye-opening. I wanted to present to you. There is no drama. There is no song, no music here. This is something, a fact, that you have to brave it. You'll have to face it in future. Future generations are at risk somewhere. Comprehend, understand, evaluate, and take the action. That's what I'll leave it to you. Thank you this time. We'll come back again with the next topic. Stay blessed.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you.